right, we are live. Do you believe so? Yep, we're live. All right, well, welcome back to Once Upon a Wheel. Um, my name is Kendra McCartney, and I am a full-time ceramic artist out of West Texas making magical storybook pottery. So, thank you for joining me for this week's Once Upon a Wheel. Uh, and I'm going to get started pretty quickly, so if you're just jumping on, say hello, um, tell me how you're doing today, and if you're catching the replay, same, hashtag replay, and, and let me know. Um, I love to be able to see when you've been on and get to interact with you and say hello, but I can't do that if you don't say hi. <laughs> I don't always know who is on. Hi from Mimi. Oh, hi. Hi, Mom and Mimi. So today I just finished trimming up and putting a foot ring on this new little cup. And so I am going to be making a new Cyclops. So first thing I always do is I come in and this is my little chop. <laughs> and that this is a handmade signature that I've made for clay. First thing I do is roll it in my piece. Oh no, I think I also rolled my necklace into my piece. <laughs> so you can see it on my pots. If you're just jumping on, welcome to Once Upon a Wheel. Say hello, tell me how you are and where in the world you are. And if you're catching on the replay, same. So today I'm just making a new little piece, which I cleaned up all my tools, so I don't know where they all are. But they're not all clean. I gathered all my tools. So yeah. Still working out some uh, technical difficulties when I switch from my pottery wheel to my work table because my I've got a big window right here which is wonderful for natural light but it does some new things. Oh hi Clint! Out in New Mexico, yes. I'll be excited to get to New Mexico in the next year or so. Watching in the sunroom and enjoying lunch. I am going to be ready for lunch. <laughs> So yeah, I've got some technical difficulties, like figuring out which, like with the lighting and with my tripods, I've got two different ones and I'm just, it's not quite working out for this space as well. Like I feel really washed out um, than I, what I did for my, my magical makeup for today's episode. So hopefully, and I will kind of spin this around so y'all can see what I'm doing. I'm so excited. My pieces are dried and I'm loading the kiln this afternoon after lunch. Um, it has been a long time since I've been able to fire the kiln and I finally got all my pieces ready. They're pretty much dry. I will do a firing um, a long firing so I'll kindle it tonight for like eight hours six to eight hours something like that and then it will start firing in the early early morning hours and then it'll get finished tomorrow so I can hopefully unload it by Wednesday and then I can start glazing so tomorrow I'll be setting up glazing I <laughs> love your fun hair. Thanks, Shayna. Yeah, you can't see. I did as well. I did constellation makeup and um, doing that when you're blind. Guys, I thought I was just putting makeup on where it looked like I smacked myself in the face. I was like, oh, I hope this turns out like a constellation and not like I gave myself a black eye. It turned out fine when I finally finished it, but there for a little bit I was like, I don't know about this. 
it is exciting. I'm so ready to fire the kiln. I haven't fired the kiln in 2021. We're in 2021. Um, and I've usually, you know, usually by this point I've fired it at least once and it's been a little bit of a rough year and a slower making schedule, but I've just tried to let that run its course and not stress, overly stress about it. The kiln will get fired when it gets fired. Hair is cute. Yep, pretty purple. <laughs> Looks good, stellar. Thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm still learning um, how to do some of these looks, so it's a lot of fun. So I'm messy when I add on all my pieces. I'll probably go overboard, but that's all right. So I do have, going with my stellar cosmic theme, guys, I do have a little cyclops that is in the shop that is based off of the moon. It's got little moon craters. It's just a little silly cyclops cup. And it's hard to see because once again, this lighting's a little weird with the natural and then my studio lights off. Um, but this is a really dark, almost a dark purplish brown. And then around the edges, it kind of lightly, you see tints of blue. And then the eye is that metallic. And then the inside is actually a black and a blue. Um, so very cosmic. I'll make sure to do a post about him later. I might need to re-photograph him. I don't remember what he looks like in the photographs. But I thought, I thought he was perfect little companion today while I had my stellar makeup. He's a good little size. He would be actually really, I mean, you could drink out of him, but he would also be really cute just to hold things. Oh, there's my eyelids. These are going to be eyelids. <laughs> so... I hope everybody is doing well this week and had a good weekend. We did taxes. <laughs> That's not very magical, but at least it's done. Now this one, because I'm working on it today, will not be ready for the kiln. He will be too wet and will go and the next kiln firing. And I think next week, well, actually, yeah, probably next week I'll be doing a glaze firing. So I probably will go live twice for Once Upon a Wheel. Um, oh, thank you, Lily. Yeah, I had fun with my hair. My hair has gotten long. Um, if anybody knows any great hairstyles to do with long hair, send them to me later. I'm starting to run out of ideas. <laughs> Uh, I've never had my hair this long. I kind of love it. The weather was nice here, Shayna. Good. I'm glad y'all had some nice weather. I think it's nice today. It doesn't look like it's windy. The sky doesn't look like it's brown from Lubbock dirt, so that's a good sign. Usually this time of year, I better not jinx us, but yeah. We, we usually get a lot of dirt this type of time of year. So he always looks a little goofy before I start. It's hot today, fire weather. Oh, I don't want to go outside then, but I have to. I have to go work on the garage for the kiln. Mm. I'm, uh, I like spring for gardening. I don't like spring in West Texas for the dirt, the fire weather, and the heat. So while it's probably a little extra, I like to do the extra scoring around so I can, um, I can really blend it in, make sure I've got a good connection to the piece, as well as 
I'll come back in and really form it. And so it's, it becomes really part of the cup and then there's not a separation. And then I can clean it up and add my textures and the details. So I think a few weeks ago, um, I, I shared that we, Josh and I, went um, to a theater's garage sale. Um, they were going through a lot of their old costumes and stuff like that. This is one of the tops <laughs> that I got there. And the, the first time we went, the first day we went was like, everything was still priced really great, you know, like $2 an item for the most part and accessories like five for a dollar, things like that. Well, we went back on their last day and it was 10 cents an item. Came home with a whole new wardrobe. <laughs> So I need to start doing some pictures. Um, some of them are very, they're still costume-esque because uh, they did come from a theater department and a costume shop, um, which I used to work at. But, and then some of them are more like, yeah, yeah, that could be regular clothes. Many of them will make me look like a fairy or a hobbit, which I'm quite excited about. And some of them I need to add on to. Um, one, I've got a pair of overalls from them. They've got some torn holes in the knees. So I've been doing some visible mending, which is a lot of fun. But they, they're like bleach splattered and ugh, they're fun. They're going to be my new studio overalls once I get them all up and repaired with the embroidery. So see how that's starting to be blended? I've got a nicer transition. When I first started doing the Cyclops, um, they didn't have mouths or the teeth. They were just kind of these eerie eyes on cups. <laughs> Which, I might do a run of those for the fall. Um, but I'm focusing my, my style a lot more, so these will have teeth. And actually, this one's going to have mushrooms because I've been working on some mushroom cyclops. I have quite a few mushroom pieces in the shop right now and I've got mushroom pieces waiting to be fired. Does that help prevent stress cracks? Uh, yes, Shayna, it does. Um, you want a good connection between the two. You want them to be relatively same softness and if the softness of the clay I'm adding is wetter or drier than the cup, then I have to really make sure that like slipping and scoring um, helps with that transition so they will dry together. It's also why I do a lot of control drying. Mimi said, oh my gosh, braces would be so cute. That's a great idea. My, my grandmother's watching with my mom, guys. Um, I love that. I have not made any, you know, I was thinking about making some with glasses, um, but that might be, I haven't decided if I want to do it like a monocle or if I want to do it like, I don't know. So, hey Lane, nice to see you. I hope you're doing well. I'm making a new piece today, making a new little Cyclops. This is going to have mushrooms. So, oh, yeah, braces, that'd be cute. I've got some, I've got some new things coming in the studio, guys, and uh, can't tell you yet. Some of it's a surprise. Um, but I got some things that I'm working on and some ideas and some new changes coming. So, monocle or glasses would be great. Yeah, I've been trying to think of the logistics of it, like, would I do it like sunglasses where you can't see the eye? Would I do it where it's like down on the nose? Would I do it hanging up? Like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of the logistics on that one. Braces would be really fun though and a fun place to start. Um, I have been adding occasionally some noses, but those are usually to like my tree spirits. Um, 
I've got a, like this one. So you know, this one has a little nose and the, the open mouth. And I've got a Tree Spirit cup that's going in the, well, I've got one that's a special order and then one that will be in the shop. Um, and it's got ladybugs on it, so. I do love the feel and the look of this cup. Um, it, it just works really well. This one won't be a mug, but this is a good shape for mugs because of that curve. It can't be glasses. They only have one eye. Yeah, but you know, like it could be glasses and you do like the X'd out mark like it's lost its eye. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, some of those uh, accessories. I am doing, I will let you in on this, talking about things coming up in the studio. I am going to be doing little collections. So there will be maybe four, you know, between three and five pieces in a collection. Um, they're going to get released together. Um, or can have an eye patch and be a pirate. See, that'd be cute too, Shana. So they'll get released together. And I won't do like these big shop updates. Um, partly because that's overwhelming for me. And I think... I don't know, I could be wrong. If you've been in one of those shop updates when you're trying to buy, please comment. Um, but I feel like that could be overwhelming for the um, my collectors, for y'all guys. So what I'm thinking about doing is instead of these big shop updates that have 30, 40 new pieces in it, I would do maybe twice a month or depending on how many collections I have available, probably about twice a month. Um, first of the month in the middle of the month, release three to five mushroom cyclops or stuff like that. And I think that will be a little less crazy. Um, and I'm excited to be offering little collections because when I first started the cyclops, I was doing all carved. I was doing these guys. That has no water in it. So they were my classic black and white, which was my pottery. And then I started doing a hundred Cyclops series, which I finished, but I didn't finish with numbers. Like, I think I'm all, I only ended up labeling and numbering like 80 something of them. So with these new collections, they won't be numbered, which is kind of nice. Um, but I'll release them a little bit differently. And I'm excited about that. It's not as stressful. <laughs> All right, so he's gonna have, he's kind of got this goofy face going on. I'm gonna sculpt that, but can y'all see his little face? It kind of comes down. It also gives me a little bit of room to play with some new things. And I, I love doing the Cyclops, they're a lot of fun. I don't like my tripod, this bouncy one. It's bouncing a little bit, guys. Sorry about that. Like I said, I gotta figure out a slightly better setup. Do y'all hear Amelia? I might have to let her in. <laughs> oh no. Okay, I'm gonna go let the cat in. She's crying, she's woken up. She heard me talking. <laughs> She's probably gonna come walk in front of the camera. <laughs> there was one time I was, uh, I couldn't keep her at bay any longer. It's okay, Josh, thank you for trying. She'll probably now go cry at the other side of the door and want out because, you know, she's a cat. <laughs> she's gonna mess with everything. Amelia is the studio manager. If y'all haven't met her, yeah, she's at the door. Um, she is named after a um, Doctor Who character, Amelia Pond. 
and uh, she turned nine this year, do you believe? I think she turned nine. She's a mess. She loves to be in the studio. She will tiptoe around things. I've only had her break. Let's see, she's, she's stepped on some plates, some of which were salvageable. They just had kitty footprints in it. Um, most were not because she squished them too much. I kept, actually kept one of them and made it into an ornament with her name on it this last year. She's done that a few times over the years. And then she got mad at me about something and threw one of my paperweights and broke that. She threw that on the floor, like on the concrete. Um, but when I had my pedestals and my residency studio with the gallery set up, she, she had access to all of that. And she would just tiptoe around on the pedestals. She's funny. Yeah, she's trying to open the door. I let her in. She's decided to leave. If y'all have any questions or just want to say something completely random, please drop them in the comments, whether you're watching live or replay. Um, this is a great time to ask them because it's a much more casual setting for me and it's fun when they're it's definitely fun when the questions are live but I will get back to you if you uh, have any questions and you're catching not catching this live I uh Lots of ideas I am working on. I'm still thinking about that pirate comment, Shayna. That could be really cute. That would get into like, well, for May, I'm gonna be doing lots of mermaids for mermaid. How long does it take to make a piece? Ooh, Joyce, nice to see you. Um, That's a great question. It depends, oh my goodness. Um, so, like these little cyclops, so for throwing, it only takes me a couple of minutes. I will prep the clay, I'll, I'll usually prep small batches of clay just to not wear out my wrist or my back. Um, I usually do like six to 10 at a time, depending on what I'm working on. And then, so they'll get thrown and then Later, I will, uh, that takes a couple minutes, and then they'll sit for about a day, maybe two days, with some controlled slow drying so they're not sticky, and I can um, get them back on the wheel so I can trim their foot rings and kind of clean them up. That can take a little bit longer depending on if I'm doing a complicated trim or if I'm just struggling to get it centered, because you do have to recenter it. Uh, last week, I waited and didn't do Once Upon a Wheel because I sat down at the wheel, was having some bad vertigo, and looking at something spinning was awful, so I was like, I think I'm gonna skip my, my live show, give myself a week, see how I'm feeling, feel much better. As far as sculpting, I will spend anywhere from a few hours to a couple of days on a cup, um, especially if it has a lot of details or if it has like my tree twiggy handles. Um, those take a lot more time. So there's like a hands-on time and then there's a wait around and dry monitor time so I usually am like rotating between a few things or that's when I'll be like okay time to go work on the um the website or my Etsy shop or something else and then glazing just depends it usually takes me like for per piece <laughs> she's being so talkative to me 
Um, no, Amelia. <laughs> Sorry, guys. The cat has a mind of her own. Um, it's totally sidetracked by the cat. Mimi said you don't look 33. I'm going to be 36. Uh, <laughs> in case anybody's wondering, my birthday's coming up. Um, yeah, glazing can take... Uh, at least an hour per piece um, because I'm doing a lot of hand layering to create my looks. Uh, I am not a production potter so I'm not going for speed um, and I'm not doing like you know single or two color things. A lot of times it's got multiple colors on it, under glazes, wiping it off, things like that. So just depends on the piece but definitely a lot of time goes into each piece to make it to make it really unique and special um, you can go get a coffee mug anywhere literally but you can't get one of mine <laughs> anywhere so uh, I want something that's gonna be unique that you can enjoy and it lasts a long time and now I need to lay it down on its side so I need some foam if I can pull out this foam. Nah, I pulled out all the foams. So I'm going to do this so I can add the teeth, which the tooth that I was shaping disappeared. I think that's it. And then, oh, Shayna, I saw a question from her. Do you always sketch your pieces in advance? I don't always. Like, I didn't sketch this. I'm just, I'm going off of intuition on this piece. Um... But as far as like brand new ideas, commission orders, things like that, I do sketch. Um, so with commissions, I always sketch so I can give kind of a reference point for whoever's ordering. Um, as I alter how I do commissions, there will be a design fee for that. Oh, Samantha, you joined in. Wonderful. Yes. Yes, your tree spirit is getting fired tonight and tomorrow, and then I'll start glazing it. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. I'm glad you could join. If you got a jet, jet, and then feel free to catch the replay. Thank you for commenting. <laughs> Let me know. Um, so I don't always... But on, on commissions and, and new ideas, I do. And occasionally I'll like sketch out some ideas that I'm like playing with or if some, or if I like come across a facial expression that I really like, um, that will get sketched out. I do save a lot of photos, like nature photos, either onto my phone or into Pinterest or I have, I have albums everywhere. I think I save stuff on uh, Facebook as well. And so I'll go back and use those as reference. If there's something specific I'm trying to capture, I try not to, I try to look at real photos that can be translated my way into new pieces versus looking at how to draw something. I will look at how to draw something if I've never done it, but that's just because I'm wanting to learn something new. And less concerned with, you know, actually sculpting it. Um, or just to give me a place for sculpting. So I'm adding its teeth. Any with bumblebees or other butterflies? Uh, so the bumblebees, I don't have any on my cyclops or my tree spirits right now. Um, I do have some bumblebee pieces that are trays. They're little either soap trays or jewelry trays. Um, those are in the shop right now. Got a few left. And I will... I have on my list, my list is always way too long of things I want to make. <laughs> so I usually have to like narrow it down to what I'm wanting uh, to focus on 
with my my themed pieces with my Cyclops and other storybook characters and creatures mostly focusing on Cyclops right now um, but yeah I've done some bees and butterflies in the past and they were really cute and the ladybugs the honeycomb pattern would look neat yeah I don't know how I would to the transfer since that's a roller and I'm will throwing my pieces I probably have to get a different type of stencil Josh for adding that to one of these pieces so it's it's funny to see how these start to to come along it's still a little messy I'm gonna keep getting that kind of squared away and making sure I've got a nice overlap of that lip and a good connection. And then I'm using just egg, egg foam, egg crate foam cut up to work on. Keeps me from smashing the backside. They come to life so quickly. Yes, they do. Uh, especially, and I always start with their faces. Um, you know, the other details, the textures, the whether they have little creatures crawling on them. Um, a few years ago, and this is probably what I'll be doing for Mermaid, I did some Cyclops and they had like three-dimensional starfish like attached and kind of wrapped over the side and um, I did some drawings of jellyfish but I would probably combine that with more sculptural aspects to if I redid that one again um, so I'm gonna be playing with some of that as well as a whole bunch of mermaid plates and things like that for mermaid they won't be ready in May but that's when I'm gonna work on them And then I come back in. I use a lot of the same kind of tools, so. But my wooden tools are some of my favorite. This one in particular, because it's got a nice sharp edge. And I can go in and really kind of give some depth underneath that lip. See if y'all can see that before I clean it up. See? It's nice. I love to have that place that goes up underneath. It catches my underglaze really well and creates a really nice shadow. And when I glaze my pieces, um, I really consider my pieces like a canvas, which is why I'm not in a hurry to paint them, um, paint the glaze on. I I just try to get the layers and the depth created with the different with the different colors. Some of my pieces will have multiple. And then I just cross my fingers and hope it does right in the kiln. Because <laughs> it doesn't always. Uh, some glazes are fussy and they want to be in the middle of the kiln where they they have a different slightly different cooling and they stay hotter longer. There's a, a science and a little bit of alchemy going on there. <laughs> and I just sometimes hope it's going to work out good. But I'll do a kiln reveal next week. That'll be fun. I'll try not to show y'all too much in my messy garage studio. So yeah, there we go. He's a lot more smooth down. And now I get to add some mushrooms. Love that everybody's saying hi in the comments and if you're catching the replay say hello i will get back on here later and if you've got people that want to see this um but they are not on facebook um because this is a public post so you can share it with whoever but i have started uploading these to youtube so i will 
I don't know if I ever did a post about that, but I will do a new post. There's the cat. She's good. <laughs> There's Amelia. <laughs> Bye, Mom. Thanks for joining. So, um, I will have these available where you can also watch them on YouTube or you could share them with someone on YouTube. I've only got two or three up so far, so I will work on them. This is her basket where she supervises. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness she's really the star of once upon a wheel i'm i'm just here for emotional support i guess oh my goodness she's such a mess yep that's her basket i've I've had to start actually moving some clean towels to my bookcase because she lays on my work, my clean work towels most of the time. But she, I will, I will give her this. She is very gentle walking around. Like she did that. She walked across all of this, didn't knock anything over, didn't break anything, didn't step on my tools. I had a handle that was wet and it was propped up like this direction like a rainbow up on the table over here the other day and it was lightly covered in plastic she walked around it and three other pieces to get into her basket and didn't break anything smush anything nothing so she's a good studio manager so yeah i'm adding these nice little mushrooms And I don't know what I'll do with the background. That might be something I decide after lunch. Wrap this up and let it let it sit for a little bit and let my brain have some time to contemplate. If you are wanting to add more creativity in your life, literally make some time for it. Make some time to daydream. I think... Um, something we get told as adults or as we're growing up is we can't daydream or we have this notion that we can't daydream. That is silly. Take time to daydream. You will start to add more creativity and the more creativity you add into your life, the more creativity you add in your life. Like it just keeps coming. You're not gonna, it's not pie. Once you use some creativity, it's gone. It keeps going. She's watching us watch you. <laughs> <Hell yeah. laughs> oh my goodness. And if all else fails, watch a cat video. <laughs> or my videos with the cat. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I can already feel my cup as I'm working on it, I'm, it's going to need some resting time um, where I spray it down a little bit and all the new pieces I've added on and it kind of all get to the same place. I don't want it to dry too fast. And of course I'm working in a very dry part of Texas so I do struggle with things drying out too fast and cracking yep your grand kitty mom <laughs> she's a mess I can't believe she's nine she's been doing studio work with me for a long time So starting to add on some little mushrooms to its 
base down here. I'll probably put a few more, or maybe I'll even, mm, you know what I'm gonna do? Let me rinse this. Take like 10 seconds, not even 10 seconds. I'm gonna make some moss. This is a tea strainer. Let's see, when we first got her as a kitten, she wouldn't stop, oh yeah. Yeah, my sister was living with me uh, and we were roommates when I first got Amelia. She came from one of the art professors in town and we brought her home and she was so sweet and then she just nonstop cried and talked for like four days. She's Siamese. Like, you can't tell by her markings, but her mom was Siamese, or is. I think her mom's still around. Um, and so, yeah, like, I was like, oh no, my last cat didn't talk at all. And this cat's going to talk all the time. And she does. She'll, she'll like, fuss at you. <laughs> Let you know when she's in charge. The rest of us are not in charge. We just graciously work for her to have food and a place to live um <laughs> she is definitely a mess she's chilled she's mellowed i won't say chilled she's still crazy and will make you bleed if you don't watch it um but she has mellowed out overall So this is a cool little tool. Let's see. Aw, Siamese are very vocal. Ghost. Yep. Yeah. Amelia. Siamese are so vocal, Lindsay. My last cat was um, this Tabby Man Maine Coon mix. And he was like silent. He, he chirped a little bit with birds. But when he opened his mouth to like meow, nothing would usually come out. Um... And he, I'd, I had had him as a rescue since a kitten. And so having Amelia, who was like super talkative, was a totally new experience for me. She's only the second cat I've ever had in my entire life. So yeah, she was, she was something else getting to, getting used to as far as that went. See if I've missed any comments. No, but Ziggy, um, yeah. So my mom just mentioned my other cat, Ziggy, the Maine Coon, and uh, he did. He rode in a car. You know when you drive up and you see like someone's little dog sitting on their lap, looking out the window. That was my cat, my like sixteen pound cat. Um, he was a big cat, and he he loved car rides. It was so weird. But he was also my escape artist, which is why I don't have him anymore, because uh, he escaped. <laughs> and frequently, I usually could find him, but I never, he found somebody else that last time. So, and Amelia is very prissy, very different. She, she likes to be inside, she likes to supervise whatever's going on. She wants to be wherever people are. When I had my, my our big studio at the residency, um, occasionally people would bring their dogs and she she would put them in their place. Doesn't like cats, but she would put big dogs in their place. Like, this is my property. So, yeah, she is, she is something else. Okay, I think that mesh should be air dried enough where I can push some clay through. I'm gonna add some moss to this one. And then I'm gonna wrap it up and go have some lunch and then think about what else I'm gonna do to this piece because I don't really know what texture I wanna do on this one. I'm gonna give it an eyelid. So now that the weather is getting warmer, the nice thing, one of, I, I'm not a big fan of the hot weather, but at least I can go outside and I can go spray since I don't have a 
clay sink in my studio inside, I can go spray all of my foams and all my boards down with the, with the water hose. Okay, so kind of added those little mushrooms on. And he might, I like to give it enough places to hold it and then think about drinking from the right or the left hand. So, but with that, he can probably have maybe like one up here, one or two small ones up here, and I might put a few more down there. So we'll see. Put them upside down right now though. So some of you might have seen my TikTok video of me doing this. But I'm going to so I've got a tea strainer. I'm gonna push the clay through. Can you see? And this just gives me a really nice mossy texture to like work with. Um, and I am so sorry for anybody watching. I probably should have given you a heads up that I was going to do this in case you have tryptophobia. Um, I usually do a trigger warning on my videos for that. Because I don't want to unnecessarily freak people out. So that's it all kind of pushed through. Kind of hard to get it in focus. And then what I will do is cut it off. I'll kind of score where I want to put it. So let's see. I'm going to put it down here by the mushrooms. Maybe a little bit off to the side of the base. Now, I don't ever want this like way up top unless it's going to be like on a planter or a non functional piece um, because there's not a way to like glaze it where it's not going to still have all of that space. So I try to put it somewhere low where it can just be rinsed and it'll be fine. So I just kind of cut it off. There we go. See? Did it? Ew. So unfocused. Sorry, guys. And then I add just a little bit of my clay water where I want to put it. And then I'll take it off with this. And I'll just stick it on. And sometimes it doesn't all stick down and I usually add since this is a little pokey I have no idea what this tool is actually used for but this is what I use it for came in one of my basic clay kits <laughs> so satisfying glad you think that Shayna oh see that part came off and that's okay I usually do just a few little textures to like kind of help with the transition. I'll go and kind of push it down in a few places. That looks like it might need it. I'm not always going, I'm not going for like hyper realism here, just mushrooms and moss. And then I've got one more little space over there, so I'll, that's about right on size. See, there we go. See. I need to do an actual video of this again because I had some people asking, like clay people, I think, asking me for some, some help, and I didn't develop this. 
I don't think the artist I learned it from developed it either. So it's just a nice way of sharing and making something, sharing something and making it your own. There we go. So yeah, I'll end up uh, I'll end up putting putting a little bit probably right here, one or two, and then I can see some spots where I'm like, oh, that's gonna need to be cleaned up, smoothed down. Some of that I do when it's still pretty soft, and others I do when it's dried up just a little bit more. Just kind of depends. There we go. So, anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed uh, today's Once Upon a Wheel. If I didn't get to your question uh, or didn't respond, I'll make sure to look at that in uh, after I've posted it. I'll also post my uh, shop update uh, when it comes. It'll probably be. I don't have a lot of new pieces going in, but I do have some new ones, some new monsters. So those new pieces will go in the shop probably in the next like, two, two and a half weeks. But I'll let y'all know when that comes up. I'm a little bit closer. So I hope y'all have a magical... Oh, hello. Is this still live? Hi, Rosie. It is still live. I was just wrapping up. Um, I hope y'all have a magical Monday and you've enjoyed this week's Once Upon a Wheel, and I will be back next Monday. So uh, I will talk to y'all soon. Have a good one.